It was around the uh, bone, try it, like not to like cut much because everything is like a group while I'm talking, it's, it's coming the recording. All right, so um, I want to talk to you like for five minutes. I know some of you come to my office concerned about the grades and, and about this performance in the class and all this stuff. So just like want to say one thing, the midterm exam was very, very easy. Mm -hmm. There was nothing tricky and everything was full, like straightforward. Like there was nothing that is like, I give you like a problem from different planets or everything was like, I give you the velocity, I give you everything. One of the problems is almost the same from 40%. 40% of the point is the same problem from the notes. So if you studied the notes, you would be able to solve the problem. Okay, so that's one problem. The other one, it's just like if in the first one was like similar to one of the quizzes. So if, if you look at the quiz solution or if you try to understand the problem, you'll be able to solve the exam. And I, I should like when the exam get graded, I should see like a good performance. But who didn't get like, um, still the T is still working on the grading but who didn't like did good in the midterm? There's another midterm, there's a bunch of quizzes, there's a final exam, so there's a lot that you can do for this class. You didn't lose a lot, okay? So it's just like we are still not half the semester yet, so there's still lots of things to do. There's a way to come back. There's another midterm, you can study, you can. Because the thing is, moving forward, there will be much difficult stuff. It doesn't get easy, okay? We're right working on park. We are gonna work next on rigid bodies. Rigid bodies that has inertia, that has angular velocity, it has lots of stuff that we are gonna work on. So you need to understand the concept of particle bursts so that you can do better in rigid bodies, okay? So maybe I'm, I'm gonna tell you a story just to like, to see like that you might come back. Like, take it, I, like when I took this class, it was in, back in Cairo University, and what the professor decided, okay, it wasn't the class like 60 students like this, it was like 600 students, several engineers. So the grading, if everyone is writing, um, like if you are solving the exam and you are trying to solve the problems, you write lots of things that doesn't relate to the problem, so it's a waste of time. So he decided to make an MCQ, like multiple choice questions. And, and for multiple choice questions, he doesn't care how much effort you put in the problem. All he cares about the final result. So you don't get partial credit for anything. Only what is matter is the numbers. He said we are engineers. Like, if we are designing a foundation and if we design it wrong, it doesn't matter how much work you put in the design. What matters is the final design. That's how it works in mechanics. So it is your final answer is what matters. Not only this, he said if you, any, wrong like if you if you decided okay i don't know how how to answer this so i'm gonna check anyone any wrong answer is a negative one so it's not zero can you imagine even if you are solving the problem and while solving the problem by mistake you mistake with some number you change it signs the plus or minus the whole problem is gonna be wrong and guess what the first midterm i got negative five out of 20. i'm not kidding lots of negatives so and then, I'm not kidding, I got negative five. It was the only negative that I got in my life. But coming back, it was other midterm. I studied very, very well for the midterm and finally got, and guess what? I got the full mark in all of them. And I got in the class. So there's, a, there's always a way to come back. There's always a way to come back. If you study very hard, sometimes we get in the midterm, first midterm or something, we get beat. But if you, if you stay on the same pace, you don't study hard, you don't know what you did wrong, you will get, like it doesn't get better. It only get better is when you put more work. So definitely uh, you need to put more work because what is coming is more difficult. We still have like another six weeks or seven weeks. So maybe you need to study hard, you see what you did. We only did chapter 12, chapter 13, chapter 14. If you give each chapter two days of your time, see what you missed, 
what you need to understand. Maybe you sit with one of uh, your like classmates. If you have any questions, I'm available anytime. Ask me for a Zoom meeting, I'm gonna meet you. Uh, don't hesitate, everyone is emailing me, I need a Zoom meeting, I will meet him because my office hour maybe doesn't match, so just come to me and ask me any questions that you have, but you have to put some effort. And also let, let me mention one thing. There is difference between that you are smart and you understand everything that I'm saying and this, everything on the board, you can understand it, and getting points in the exam. And that's actually what happened with me in the first semester. I was studying very hard, but I got negative. The thing is, I wasn't focused enough to like, I changed it maybe a plus sign with negative sign, and it messed with all my learning. Because if you are getting the velocity wrong, the acceleration is wrong, the distance is wrong, the time is wrong, everything is wrong. So you are getting negative one, negative one, negative one, and it all adds up, okay? So you need to know what is your point of weaknesses and work on. So for me, like at some exams, like, uh, even when I was in high school, you, if you wanna get the maximum points, like if you wanna get A or something, you need to put yourself in an exam environment before the exam. Like make exam to yourself. Like put some questions on a piece of paper, like try to like open Word and put question one, question two, question three, and test yourself. Put yourself in the test environment. See if you are gonna survive this test or not, because if you didn't, you are not gonna survive the test in the class. So. Definitely you are not gonna get the full mark or you are not gonna do better in this exam, but do it one more time, second time, and grade yourself, grade for yourself. And then you will get 75, maybe first time, or you are getting 50, the next time you are gonna get 75, the next time you are gonna get 80. And then you will learn it from your mistake. This is how it works. Getting grades is different from studying, is different from being the smart. You are smart and you understand everything, but you might get B or C in the, uh, in the exam. So it doesn't have to relate. Solving exams and being focused in the exam, because I saw some of you are panicked when you have the exam, like, so you don't know what to do, so you, so you don't even see the numbers. Like, he's seeing the exam, but the numbers, like, he doesn't understand what's going on. You need to put yourself in the exam environment before the exam, if you wanna get, good point in the exam. This is actually how it works, even in high school, um, undergrad, grad, this is how it works. I know sometimes we get basic, but if you wanna get points, you need to put yourself in the exam environment because if you surprise yourself with just the, at the exam time, you definitely are gonna mess up with something. So, and solving questions with open time, okay, I'm gonna solve one problem and you stay the whole day solving the problem, it doesn't gonna work. You need to time yourself with the exam. Give the, give the problem 30 minutes because this is how the exam works, okay? And also you need to learn time management during the exam. Oh, I don't understand this problem. I need to move to the other one. Maybe the other one is much easier. If you keep thinking about the one that you don't know how to solve, your mind's still thinking about it. So, and then when you work on the other one, you will not be able to solve it. You need, you need to refresh and more focus. So if you don't, is if you don't know the answer for this question, move to the next one. So this actually my advice is, it worked with me, with most of my classes. However, there's some classes that are very special, very long, it needs different strategy to study, but this works for most, since I was in high school, this is how it works for me, okay? So I'm, I'm just, I'm not asking you to do this. I'm just giving you an advice. If you wanna survive, if you wanna get good grades, you need to like work on your like exam environment a little bit, okay? All right, so today I will try to finish chapter 15. Next week, uh, I will leave Thursday. Maybe we have another day to finish this chapter. I will try to finish it, but maybe I will not be able to finish it. So next week, um, uh, Professor uh, Leon is gonna be here. He's gonna teach the fluid dynamics part for two weeks either Tuesday or Thursday. I'm gonna confirm with you through an announcement, okay? So, uh, and then after uh, Professor Leon finished his uh, fluid dynamics part, we are gonna start the, the next half of this class, which is the dynamics of rigid bodies, okay? All right, so does anybody have any? Oh. Will we be receiving our exam with uh, like the, the grades? Advice? Like with like the advice of like what we're doing wrong and stuff? Well, the, the TA is gonna grade them, and if you have any question, come back to my office and then we can see it.
things that you can get partial credit or something. Any other questions? Uh, uh, for the exam, uh, do you know where the CPA is at with the reasoning? No, yeah, I'm going to check with him today. Okay. okay. So the fluid dynamics, is that also going to be a thing too? Uh, it's going to be in midterm too, maybe a question or two. Mm -hmm. And maybe a question in the final. Okay. Will be the week before the spring break. The spring break is spring, on spring week next, twelve. Spring right? break is like week, week, the week two after weeks. next. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Um, I think it was the March 18th or something. Yeah. Um, that the 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 second uh, midterm week number eleven. Oh, so somebody told me that week number twelve is the spring break. Mm -hmm. I think it changes. It's not Change next it? week. It's the week after that. It's like mm -hmm. the twenty eighth week. They change it. I think so. I, okay, I, I'm gonna double check because I was having it as week number 12, and then I changed it to week number 11, so I'm gonna confirm with you. Just I need to uh, know where, when is the uh, spring break is. It's like the 20th day to the, to the, or it's like the, the last week of February. Yeah. The last week of February is the, yeah. oh, so <laughs> it's gonna be uh, when Professor Vion is, okay, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure this out and let you know. I need to look at the calendar and see what's uh, off dates, and then we can find out. Okay, any other questions? Yeah. Exam two is going to be four questions as well. I think so. All right, so let's get it started. So today uh, is we are going to start a new chapter. Uh, <clears throat> so chapter. doing something, they are saying that this guy has a momentum, okay? And impulse, you heard the, the word impulse before? So let's let's understand what are these terms. Where is the impulse? The impulse is something like you have a body, and this body, you put a force on this body. Once you put a force on this body for a specific amount, of, like for some time, like few seconds, the force multiplied by the time is called the impulse. Like when you make this, the force applied for a small amount of time, so the impulse was very, very small. But once you put the force and keep applying the force on the body, so the impulse is much more. So that's what's impulse. It's force multiplied by time. Momentum is mass multiplied by velocity. For example, why do we need to describe things with different parameters? Like why do we, why do we use velocity and why do we use acceleration or why do we use momentum and velocity? The thing is, if a mass like a rock is like this size, and a rock that this size, and both of them are moving with the same speed. So you will tell me, I have two rocks that are moving with five meters per second. You are not gonna imagine what each one of do can, what each one of them can do. The small rock and the big rock. That's why we need to add the mass part to the velocity to describe how momentum everyone that has. That's why we need different quantities to describe bodies based on the mass and the velocity, okay? So, <clears throat> let's write here, momentum is force by time, uh, sorry, impulse is force by time, momentum is mass by velocity. If you guys remember, Newton's second law, law is the the base for most of the dynamics part. Like, you, like the, the law is like something, the sum of the forces is equal to the mass multiplied by the acceleration. If you guys remember how we drive the work energy relationship, we take this acceleration, we know what is what is the, the acceleration is equal to. Do you guys remember? What is the acceleration? Change of velocity. The change of the velocity, the prime rate of change of the velocity, d, 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 t. And actually, we can manipulate this and write it as d, 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 s, d, s, d, t. And d, s, d, t is the velocity. So this is, is d, 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 s. So if we put this as d, 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 s, and then we take the S and put it here, so you'll have the sum of the forces 
multiplied by ds is equal to mv dv, and then we integrated both parts. This one is the work, and this one is gonna give you half mv squared from v1 to v2. So this is the work, and let's put the work with u from one to two, okay? So this is equal half m v2 squared minus half m v1 squared. This is how we drive the relationship between the work and the, uh, the energy. Okay, we are gonna do the same thing to drive the relationship between the impulse and momentum. Okay, all right, so. relationship of today, the integration from T1 to T2 is equal to the sum of the forces multiplied by dt here as mv2 minus mv1. This is called linear impulse. When I say impulse, always remember that there's a time involved. Okay? The difference between force and impulse, force is just a force. Impulse is force multiplied by time, so this is linear impulse. And this is the change in linear momentum. Okay? We can write this in a different way, like we can send mv1 to the other side, so you'll have mv1 plus the integration from t1 to t2, sum of the forces dt is equal to mv2. What does this mean? If you have a body, like let's say a ball, like something like this, and this ball has a momentum, for example, mv1. And then you apply on this pole, the same pole, you apply an impulse, something in this way. 
this impulse is the integration from T1 to T2, sum of the forces dt. This is going to give you a different momentum. It's going to change the direction and the, the quantity or the, the magnitude of the momentum. So for example, you have a body moving this way and you've got hit this body this way. So this body is going to change the direction and it's going to change the magnitude of the momentum. For example, this body maybe is going to move this way with mv2. This is how it works, okay? So you have a body with an initial momentum. This body, it is an impulse, like a force over time applied on this body is going to give you different momentum. So momentum is a vector? Yeah, because it's a it's it's a direct it's a vector in the same direction of the velocity. Because mass is a scalar point. So another coordinate it would be like tangent, right? Mm -hmm. Like it would be tangent. Yes. To the direction. If we have a curve in motion. Yeah. And also, sometimes like let's say that we have a curve, like um, curve like this, and your body is here. At T1 and at T2 is here. Okay? So if we are working with XY coordinate systems, so you will have X and you will have Y, and here is X and here is Y. And if you are working with tangent normal, so this is going to be. And then here it's tangent and normal. Okay? So from time T1 to T2. So let's say that we have a linear momentum. This equation is a vector equation, like all these are vectors, like the velocity V1 and the force and V. Okay? So we can have this equation, one in the x direction, so you'll have m v 1x plus the integration from t1 to t2, sum of the forces in the x direction dt is equal to the mass multiplied by dx2. So right now I convert it from vector to scalar quantity by taking the components in x direction. So this is x direction, same thing, y direction. So you will have m v1 y plus the integration from t1 to t2, sum of the forces in the y direction dt is equal to m v y2, right? right? So let's uh, solve an example on this. Maybe. <coughs> This example, you have an uh, inclined surface like this, and the angle like 30 degrees, right? And you have a body moving on this inclined surface, and you have a pole here, and you have a maybe a cord. There's a force B equal to and the force B is not 50 pounds long, it's moving down the floor. And okay, it says that the denote of this body this body is moving with initial velocity D node 3 T per second. And it's resisted by kinetic friction, mu k is given, 0.3. The tension V is 10 tons, so this is 10 ton. And where T is the time in seconds is added for 2 seconds. So V is added for 2 seconds. This is 
very important. Find the final velocity. you will be confused. What should I use? Should I use the working energy? Should I use the, uh, the Newton second law? law? So should I use the, uh, the impulse and momentum? So we will have time and velocity. So definitely you might come to this equation. There is time and there is velocity. So this is the most easiest equation. But if you have acceleration, okay, I'm gonna send about, I'm gonna think about the Newton second law, okay? And, <clears throat> and you have a velocity and distance, what should I use? Like if I talk about distance, S, and velocity, a body's moving and he cut distance, five meters. I use work and energy because work is forced by distance and energy has velocity, have mv squared. If you, given velocity and uh, and distance, and you use this, you are gonna take a very, very long batch. Why? Because distance, you need to convert it to time. You need to relate velocity to the time, and then get velocity to distance, and then get time. So you are gonna take more time until you get to solve this problem, okay? So you need to, which approach you should use based on what's given in the problem, okay? Maybe we talk a little bit uh, next time about it, like if you are given this and this, you are gonna use this, so we're gonna talk about it more maybe next time. So okay, let's focus on this problem. I know that there is given B, and I have velocity, and I have time, so let's use the impulse and momentum principle. Okay, so what should I do? You are gonna do the same thing that you used to do for Newton and kinetics. You are gonna draw a free body diagram with the forces on the body, so I have my body's here. Okay, what is the forces on this body? You guys tell me. Weight. Weight. Normal. Right, so I have the first thing is the weight, W. Somebody said I have a normal force. And friction. The friction, okay. This body's moving velocity this way, so the friction is on the other way. So I have F of friction. What, what else? The, the variable force? The fan P. P. Oh, P. it's not, it's constant. Oh, it's constant. But I need you to think about it a little more. How much should I put here? 20, right? Yeah. Two, yeah, because it's the same. Because you have a T here and a T here. That's what bullies do. It doubles the forces, okay? So you have 10 coming from here and 10 coming from here. So you are doubling this force. But uh, let me tell you that T is because I said here T, I, I forgot to write it, T is not time, T is, is time in seconds. So T, because everything in units here is in bound, T is time in seconds. I spelled it, but I didn't write it. So T is a variable, yeah, it's a variable force, okay? So I have here 20 P, that's a, a trick here. Most of you are gonna put 10 P, but this bully is doing something. It's, it's doubling the force. Okay, so I put all the forces here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna solve the uh, impulse and momentum in X and Y direction. Same thing that I used to do with the Newtonian kinetics, but right now I'm gonna solve impulse and momentum. Okay, so let's do it. So let's solve Y direction first. So I'm gonna say Y direction. Actually, I can write this equation this way. <coughs> Some of the forces in in y <coughs> dt is equal to m v2 minus m v1. Let's see what we have here. Okay, so you have y. So what is the forces in the y direction? <coughs> what is the angle here first? <coughs> Thirty. Okay, so let's let's put it here. Okay, I have this here. I have this here, and this angle is 30, and this is my y direction. And to not be confused, you can, this is the free body diagram, and you can do the kinetic diagram, here is your body, and I'm gonna assume 
that this is my x direction and this is my y direction. So that's what I'm looking for. This one, this is my y direction. And this is w. So this angle and this angle is 90, and this angle and this angle is 90. So this is the 30 degree. All right, so what do I have in the y direction? What force is in y direction? Normal. The normal force. Is it positive or negative? Positive. So I have n. And the weight. Weight. Yeah, y y and it's negative because it's going down. So it's, it's this way. This is W cosine 30. So W cosine 30. And all this is integrated over time. From zero, look at this. It says D is added for two seconds. So I have from zero to two seconds. All this is equal to mv2, I have the mass of the body, it's, uh, it's w is equal to 20, sorry, 50 pounds. All right, so what should I put here for the mass? 32.2. Multiply it by V2, and actually what is required here, find the final velocity, which is V2 minus M50 over 32.2. V1 is given, V0 is 3 feet per second. So this is multiplied by V2. All right. I did something wrong here, and you need to capture it. that I'm working on. Why? And what velocity that I put here uh, is in the x direction, right? So all the velocity in the y directions are zero. So this part is gonna be valid, but when we put here x direction, so when I put x direction, so all the velocity and all the motion are gonna be in x direction. So I have, mm -hmm. sorry for that. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna make this zero, okay? So this is gonna give me a very, very simple equation, which is that normal force is equal to W cosine 30. So this N is equal to W cosine 30. And this is gonna be equal 50 sine 30. No, no, this is the y direction. Oh, so okay. this is all the forces in the y direction. The thing is, you need to pick the forces that are in the same direction with the velocity. So I, I pick the forces in the y direction, which is the normal and the weight component, but this body doesn't move in the y direction. It, all the movement is in the x direction. So I have to put mv2 and mv1, all of them are equal to zero. Okay. So okay. Yeah, so right now I can integrate this one, but actually I can, I can do the integration. Once you integrate it, it's gonna be n minus cosine 30, and this is gonna be t, right? Because I'm integrating with respect to the t, is equal to zero. Then this is independent of t, you can divide by t, and this you will end up with that this part is equal to zero. So you can do the integration, but it doesn't matter. Because once you integrate this, and all this is a constant, this constant you are gonna take it out, and you are gonna integrate from zero to two to dt, and then you divide over t, so it's independent of the time, okay? So, <clears throat> once you solve this, you will find that the normal force is 43.3 pounds, okay? So this is the normal force. And once you have the normal force, you can find at the friction, because it's a new k multiplied by the normal force, that friction, I didn't calculate it, but <coughs> that co friction coefficient is 0.3, and here is 43.3. Use the calculator and you will find it. X direction, that's what is, more work is needed. So for X direction, you will have the same thing, the integration from zero to two, sum of the forces in the X, 
dt is equal to m z x2 minus m v x1. So once you do this, what is the forces in the x direction? Uh, the friction of the wave tension. Okay, so I have 20t mm -hmm. that coming from the external force and it's positive. So you have here, by the way, in this, uh, in the um, in the notes, I, I assume the x on the other direction, but it's gonna be the same thing, okay? So let's do it the way that I did it on the board. So I have 20t in the positive direction nice. and, and then you have the, the, the weight component, the sine component, plus w, sine 30, minus the epic correction, which is 0.3, multiplied by 4, 43.3. This is all the forces that I have, dt. This is gonna be equal to the mass multiplied by the velocity in the x direction. So I have the mass 50 over 52.2, multiplied by v2, which is what we are looking for, plus, minus, sorry. Fifty over 32.2 multiplied by the velocity V1, mm -hmm. which is three feet per second. So that's where we put the, the velocity component in the x direction. I need to integrate this part with steam. And what is the only unknown here? The V2, right? So once you integrate this part, okay, we can integrate this. It's gonna be 20t. When you integrate it with t, it's gonna be 10 t squared. And this part, so this part is gonna be constant. So once you integrate it, it's gonna be plus 12.01t. It's gonna be first degree. And then this, it's gonna be the same thing, 50. And you can send the other one with positive sign, like plus 50 over 32.2 multiplied by V. It's gonna be equal 50 over 32.2 V2. And then you find V2 is gonna be equal to, it's gonna be equal to 44.3 feet per second. In the note, if you have it right now, it's gonna be negative, why? Because I assume the x on the other direction. Okay, so it's, it's as in the, in this Okay, so right now I come with the problem. Is it difficult? It's the same steps that you have done for Newtonian kinetics, but rather than having the Newton second law, you are gonna use the impulse and momentum equations, one in the x direction, one in the y direction, okay? So let's solve another problem.
Great, so what we have here, we have a pulley problem. We have block A and block B, and there's a pulley here. And this block is 10 pounds, this block is 8 pounds. And, and it says that a 10 pound, 10 pound block A slides on a rough surface while connected by a cable and a frictionless pulley to 8 pound block B. The system starts at rest, so the system start at rest for all the initial velocities are zero, and reaches a velocity after 5 seconds to 1 feet per second. So that's very, very important information. The initial velocities are zero, the final velocities are 1 feet per second in 5 seconds. So I give you time and I give you velocity, so the first thing that you think about is the impulse and momentum this equation because we have t and we have velocity. All right, so what is required in this problem? Number one, find the friction coefficient, mu k. Number two, find the tension in the cable, t. You want the tension in the cable, align the, find the friction here. So, <coughs> What we are gonna do here, since we didn't study how like the system, the momentum of the system look like, we need to separate these two bodies separate, like each body alone. And then we study the impulse and momentum alone in each one. So how we can do this. All right, so let's just start with log B. Now I tell you why, okay, let's. Block B is less worth, why? You tell me, why block B is less worth than block A? Oh, there's no friction forces? Yes, just two forces. Block uh, A has friction, has tension, has oh. weight, has normal force, has lots of stuff to do with it. But this one is just the weight and just the tension. And you need to keep this in your mind. If you have one cable, the tension is always constant on the cable. Mm -hmm. Like the same problem that we solved it here. The tension here, is the same as the tension here, as the tension here, as the tension here, as the tension here. Mm -hmm. So you have a tension and you have another tension. So you have two tension. As soon as it's the same cable, like if I'm tensioning, like for example, this is a cable. And I'm like at tension to this cable and somebody put his finger here. This finger is not gonna change the tension in the cable because all the tension goes all the way to the cable. So you have two tensions in this cable one from here and one from here so my finger is resisting two tension so if I'm resisting one tension this is like is light tension but if you have two so there's two is is grabbing you down so two tension forces grabbing you down so let's let's figure block B so number one block B block B is something like this what is the forces of block B tension and weight tension and weight so I have a tension up there I have a weight goes down like this. So uh, should I do impulse and momentum in x direction? It's gonna be a waste of time. There's no forces, there's no displacement, so it's gonna be only one impulse and momentum equation. So I can say mv1 plus the integration of the forces from t1 to t2 dt is equal to mv2. I don't have to bother with either this in x and y direction because I only know it's only one motion. Okay. So it says it starts at rest, so definitely V1, let's double check, I believe I said rest, right? Yeah. Okay, so it says the system starts at rest, so definitely this is, is a zero. And the final velocity is one feet per second, so I have this, and I have the mass, so I need to figure this out. So what is the forces acting on this block? And let's say uh, we can assume maybe positive direction goes down same as the nose, okay? So the positive direction goes down, so I can say that the force is equal to the integration from T1 to T2, and I have the positive force W minus tension integrated over dt is equal to the mass, which is eight pounds over 32.2, multiplied by V2, which is already known, is one feet per second. Okay, let's substitute. So I have, it says that the force applied for five seconds 
So I have from zero to five. The W is eight bounds. I don't know the tension. I'm gonna integrate dt, and this is gonna be eight over 32.2. All right, so once I do this, I'm gonna have eight minus t multiplied by t and integrated from zero to five. So I'm gonna multiply by five here. And this is gonna be equal to eight over 32.2. Once you solve this equation, you are gonna get the tension is equal to 7.952. Now, does anybody have any problem? I just did the integration right away. Once you integrate this, it's gonna be w minus t multiplied by t. And once you substitute by t5, so it's gonna be five, the other one is zero, so I didn't write it, okay? So I just did the integration right away. Let's get to log A. Same thing, I need to draw the body with all the forces on this body. Okay, let's put the forces. <coughs> what the forces on this body? I have the weight goes down. Normal. What else? Normal. Normal force goes up. Tension. Uh, tension. I have friction. tension goes this way. Friction. And then I have friction goes this way. Okay, so I put all the forces here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna solve this block in x direction and I'm gonna tell you why I'm doing this. All right, in x direction, so I'm gonna have m v1 plus the integration of the force dt sum the forces mv2. Same thing, start from the wrist, so this is gonna be zero. The forces in the x direction is in the tension, and I'm assuming the positive is this way. So I have tension minus f friction, which is mu k multiplied by the normal force. And all this is integrated over dt from zero to five, and this is gonna be equal, this body is 20 pounds. So it's 10 pounds, so this is 10 pounds. So I have 10 over 32.2 multiplied by V2. The, yep. the velocity of this body is the same velocity of this body because they are all connected to the same cord. Once this moves one meter per second, so this one is gonna move meter per second. Each point on this, it's gonna move by one meter per second, so this is gonna be one. Okay, so right now, <clears throat> I have T, I already got it. What is the, what I'm asking for, I already got number two. What I'm asking for is number one, the mu K, that's what I'm looking for, but I don't know the normal force, but it's very, very easy to find the normal force. Isn't the weight 20? Right? Weight? No, he said it was 10. I just said it's 10. Yeah. This is 10, okay? Double check the weight. Okay, it says lock A is 10 pounds. This is 10. Okay. All right, so right now I have this is as a 10. What I'm looking for, I want to find the normal force. And the only way to find the normal force is to find the sum of the y direction. And this is very, very easy. The normal force is equal to the weight, right? There is no any other external forces. So the normal force is going to be equal to 10 pounds. So this is it's going to be. The tension is 7.95 minus mu k, which is um, what I'm looking for, multiplied by the normal force, which is 10. All this integrated over time t, so I put t here, and this is equal to 10, 32.2 multiplied by one. The thing is, once I integrate from zero to five, I can remove t and put five here. And once you solve this, you will find that mu k is one equation one unknown, and it is going to be 0.786. Okay, <coughs> does anybody have any question? So what I did, I have two blocks. They are moving with the same velocity, and they started at rest. So v1 is all zeros in for the two blocks, and v2 are the same as equal one t per second. All you, the work that you have to do is to figure out what are the forces on each body. 
So I figured out that this has two forces. I put them here, I integrate it over the time, and I solve it for T. For block T, it's a little bit tricky because it has lots of forces. It has X direction forces, which is very easy. The normal force is equal to the weight. There's no, it doesn't move in this direction, so I can't say it's equal to 10 pounds. If you want to solve linear momentum in Y direction, you can do it. Like you can say, for example, this is in Y direction. Uh, this is in X direction. So you can solve the Y direction, and then rather than putting this, you're going to put the normal minus the weight it's gonna be here, and it's going to be equal the velocity equal to zero. So the normal minus the weight is equal to zero, so the normal is equal to the weight is equal to 10 pounds. That's what um, I did. You can solve this problem in a different way. <coughs> You can solve the whole system in one time, log A and log B, without separating them. All right, so I have here log A, and I have log B, and they are connected this way, and this system is moving down, it's moving this way, so this is the direction, this is the positive. So I have two masses, so what I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say the sum of all the masses multiplied by their velocity plus the integration of the forces on the direction of the motion, all the forces, dt is gonna be equal to the sum of the masses multiplied by V2 of the whole system. Assuming that these two bodies are moving together as a one body, okay? All right, so what I did over there, I cut in the cord and the tension appeared. Right now, I'm not gonna cut in the cord. I'm gonna keep the cord, the cord or the, um, or this, rob the same. So if you, want to consider the tension, so there's a tension here and there's a tension here, so they are gonna cancel each other. So we are gonna keep the core the same, so we are gonna look how the system uh, is moving. So we need to look at all the forces in the direction of the movement. So put the forces here. So the forces in the direction of this movement is, you have the WT, it's moving this way. And then you have a friction here, have a friction, and then what else? I don't think that you have anything else. So you have WT, you have the forces. So this is the only forces that you can consider here. Like, because we only consider the motion this way. So all the other forces, as I said, the tension is just internal in this cord, and all the forces, like if you say that I have a normal force here, this normal force is not in the direction of the movement. And the weight of this body is not in the direction of the movement. These are the only two forces in the direction of the motion. So applying this, this part is gonna equal to zero because the velocity of these two bodies started from rest. So both of them have zero velocity. Let's figure out this part. I assume that this is positive. So I have WB is positive. So W is gonna be equal to this. So the integration from zero to five. And let's put the forces. I have W is positive. And it's equal to eight pounds. Minus the F of friction. F of friction is mu K multiplied by m, and all this is integrated over dt. It's gonna be equal to the sum of all the masses by their velocity. Let's just start by mass a. Mass a is 10 pounds, and mass b is eight pounds. And both of them has the same velocity, which is one meter per second, okay? So I put all the masses multiplied by the velocity. If I have different masses, each mass is gonna be multiplied by its velocity. But in this case, they are all have the same velocity. Uh, professor, isn't the mass over 32.2? Absolutely, yeah, that's true. 
32.2 because this is not masses, this is weights, 10 pounds. Yeah, thank you. All right, so right now I have mu k multiplied by m. So I need to find m. You can find m by the sum of the fy forces here. The same thing that we did. It's the same as the w of log a, and it's going to be equal to 10 pounds. So I'm gonna, when I'm going to integrate this, it's going to be a minus mu k multiplied by 10, all this multiplied by t going to be equal to this, and then you integrate this from 0 to 5, so you remove t and put 5, and you get mu k is going to be equal to the same number here, 0.788. Rather than separating block A and block A and block B. Right? There is <coughs> other problems that you can solve it that way, like maybe, like if you look at a um, I'm not going to solve this problem to the end. All right, so the idea for this problem, you are going to separate them, block A and block B, okay? You are gonna, once you separate them, this block, and once you separate them, this block, this is, has two tensions, right? Because it's the same code. So mm -hmm. you have two of them, so you have two t here. Here you only have one t, so this is the very specific in the problem, okay? One of them has two t, <coughs> one of them has single or one t. And then you apply the linear momentum equation in both of them, and you are gonna have an equation function in t and the velocity of t. And here you are going to find an equation t and the velocity of a. Once you put this equation, the velocity is unknown and the tension in the force is unknown. So you have three unknowns and two equations. You're going to have an equation t and vb and another equation t and va. Three unknowns with two equations. What we should do? We can get a Kessler equation, can we? Remember, like three weeks ago, what is the relationship between the velocity of this body and the velocity of this body? They are related, right? This one goes down, this one goes up. There is a way to relate them. How? Do you, do you remember we, we get a datum, and this datum we measure. Yb, and this one we measure. Ya, and for this one, 2ya plus yb is equal to constant, right? Yes. So 2va plus vb is equal to zero. So this is the third equation that you need to solve with these two equations, okay? So maybe once you get this relationship, you substitute it. We remove vb and put negative 2va. So you will end up with two equations, two and T1 and VA, and T and VA, and you solve these two equations, okay? So this is the tricky part in this problem. You are gonna use impulse momentum here, you get an equation, impulse momentum here in this body, you get an equation, end up with three unknowns, you need to figure out how to get an extra equation, and then use the principles of the independent motion, and then <coughs> you find the relationship between VA and VA. You said that you were going to solve it, but is it in the notes for today's lecture? Yeah, yeah, it's in the notes. It after? Yeah, yeah, everything is here. Okay. All right, so right now we have 15 minutes, so we are going to talk about the conservation of linear momentum. Conservation of linear momentum. So right now I'm saying conservation of linear momentum. I didn't mention uh, impulse. I'm going to say why not the conservation of linear momentum and linear impulse.
conservation of linear momentum, let's assume that I have a soccer ball and there is another soccer ball here and they are gonna hit each other, okay? So once they hit each other, they become something like this. So what happened is, let's assume that this is the positive direction, okay? This ball is gonna impact this with a force F. So this is the impact of ball B on A, okay? And this one is gonna respond with a similar force F to affect the other one. The thing is, if we put the, uh, the linear momentum uh, and impulse equations, it's gonna be the sum of the masses V1 plus the integration of the forces Vt is gonna be equal to, this is also a sum, mv2. This is for the entire system, both two, not only one. We are talking about the whole system, not only one, uh, one body, okay? All right, the thing is, if you integrated the impulse part, you are gonna find the impulse from this on this one is gonna be the, uh, the sum of F, it's gonna be F dt, but it's gonna be F dt, and this one is gonna be negative F dt. They are gonna cancel each other. So this one is gonna be zero. So usually, the internal impulses cancel each other and there's no external impulses like there's no forces that I put it from the outside that can make impulses just two balls hitting each other okay so <clears throat> that means is we can say sum of the masses multiplied by velocity v1 is equal to the sum of the masses multiplied by the velocity z2 and this is actually the rule that we can say the momentum before the collision is equal to the momentum after the collision. Usually the conservation of momentum happens when there's a collision between two bodies, okay? And this is the what we call the conservation of linear momentum equation. <clears throat> So let's give a, a quick example on this. We have body A and we have body B. The body A has a mass, has a velocity VA in this direction 15 meter per second. And this body is moving with VE and actually all this are initial velocity before the impact is equal to point, um, oh, sorry, this is 1.5 meter per second, not 15, and this is 0.75 meter per second. The mass M1 is 15,000 kilogram. The mass M2 is 12,000 kilogram. Okay, so this, the input for this problem and what I'm asking for is, what is the velocity of these two bodies when they get together? Okay, let me talk for a few minutes about the phases of the collision for itself. They can collide in a different way, like they can be something like this, and that's what we call central impact. Or they might be something like this. They are moving this way, and somehow they are going to meet here. And we, we say that this is this oblique. They are not linear, and actually, there will be an angle here, theta, and maybe this has different angles, t, and we need to 
uh, analyze the forces, but this one is much more simpler. So let's talk about the central impact. What is the phases of the central impact? Let's say that we have a body A and a body B. This body A is moving with a velocity VA1, and actually this one is moving in the same way with V, V1. And I'm saying that VA1 is more than V1. What, what's gonna happen? At some point, this one is gonna be faster than this one and hit M, because it's, it's faster than B. A is faster than B. Okay, so we call this before the impact, like this phase before the impact. Let's see what is going to happen when there is an impact. We call what happens is deformation involved. At some point, when these two are gonna touch each other, we call this the formation impulse, and, and we assume like what happened is, this body is gonna have a force on the other body, and it's gonna be FVT, and this one is gonna be the same, and if you wanna get the impulse, it's gonna be FVT, right? So, <clears throat> this is what we call the deformation impulse, okay, the force F. And once it's in back to each other, they are gonna stick together maybe for less a second and then they are gonna separate because there is a touch, right? So at the touch, at the point when they touch each other, which is number C, right, these two bodies are gonna be like one single body for a few seconds. And we call this the maximum deformation. Maximum deformation. And at this instant, those bodies are gonna have the same velocity. For this is small instant, when they touch each other, they are gonna have the same velocity, V, okay? And at some point, they are gonna separate, okay? So the number V, we call this, the, the, the next phase is restitution impulse. Okay, so they are gonna hit each other and then there is a reaction, they are gonna go away from each other. So they are gonna be something, like this, and at this moment, the impulse, we call this as R, and this is negative R, this was F, which is the, the deformation of impulse, and this impulse is the integration of R, T, and then this one, negative R, V, okay? And at some point, number E, after impact, What is gonna happen? Everyone is gonna be on its own, and this one is gonna have a velocity, and this one is gonna have a velocity, and VB2 is gonna have more velocity than VA1. So that's what is after impact. So this is MA, VA2, and this is MB, VB2. But here, this one has MA, VA1, and M. So this is actually the phases of the collision between two bodies. So let's apply this principle on these two bodies. So let's say the first phase when they collide and couple together. So when they collide and couple together, something like this, so both of them are gonna have the same velocity. So we, when we apply the this principle, the sum of the mass is V1 and sum of the mass is V2, it is always for the two bodies. So this is gonna be equal to, like when we say MVA1 plus MVB1. What I'm doing right now, I'm summing all the masses multiplied by their velocities. They have two bodies. This body has a different velocity and different mass. This body has a different velocity and different mass. So the mass one multiplied by VA1 plus the mass two multiplied by, actually this should be mass A, not one, body A, and body B. The mass of body B multiplied by the initial velocity of body B, the mass of A multiplied by the initial velocity of A. 
is going to be equal to, since they both are going to have the same velocity, so I can take the velocity as a common factor, and this is going to be ma plus mt. Why? Because at the collision, va2 is equal to vb2 is equal to v. Both of them have the same velocity. So I can take v as a common factor and put ma and m. So this is MA, this is MB. So let's solve this equation. I have MA 15,000 kilogram. VA1 is 1.5 plus MB is 12,000 kilogram. VB1 is 0.75. All this is going to be equal V, the velocity that I don't know of the two bodies, multiplied by their masses, 15,000 plus 12,000. Very, very simple equation, one unknown. So once you get the velocity of the two bodies, it's going to be 0.5 meter per second. Once these two bodies collision, <clears throat> what do you think the direction of the two bodies is going to be 0.5 this way or 0.5 this way? The right. It's positive, and I assume the positive this way. So when you saw that this is positive, so in this direction, I think that makes sense. Bigger body, bigger mass, higher velocity, and a smaller body with a smaller velocity. So definitely it's going to change the direction of the other body. So I have, but actually this 0.5 second is just for one instant when they collide together. But at some point they are gonna separate. If you wanna find the velocity of each one after the separation, you need to give up this equation, like this uh, conservation of momentum, uh, of momentum equation, and get back to the equation of impulse and momentum. How? Okay, number two, if, let's say if the coupling take 0.8 seconds, we need to know how much the collision happened, how much they were touching each other. If the coupling take 0.8 seconds. So let's take body A. So this is A, and actually B, make a force on A in the negative direction, right? This is how the impulse will like. This is negative F, and this is F. So this is F on B, so if I'm a study B, I need to take F from A. If I'm a study B, I need to take F from B. So this is how it happens. So I need to write the impulse momentum equation for this single body, because this equation is just the conservation of momentum. Two bodies are hitting each other. So I have this equation, but if I'm Dealing with one single body, I need to get back to the base equation. So, <clears throat> sum, not sum this time, it's because I don't have uh, two bodies, just one single body. So I'm dealing with only one equation, one mass here. So the mass of A multiplied by V A1 plus the integration of the force VT is going to be equal to m m a this is v a one and I have v a two all right v a one I have it one point five meter per second how about v a two how can I get it I already got it at the collision so what I'm trying to find right now I'm trying to find what is the force of the collision in given that this force is going to be for 0.8 seconds. So that's what I'm trying to find, all right? So at the collision, these started with 1.5 seconds at the collision, the post has the velocity of 0.5 meter per second. So what I'm gonna do, I have the mass is 15,000. The VA1 is 1.5 second. And the force here is negative because it's in the other way, so I have to put negative, the force F. And then it's going to be integrated from zero, because I'm saying 2.8 seconds, I'm going to put point 0.8, and then I'm going to have dt. ma is 15,000. va2 is v, which is the velocity at the collision. This is what I'm looking for. It starts by 0.5, and both of them has here. So this is going to be point 0.5, and it's positive. Once you solve this equation, you will find that the force at the collision is 18.75 kilonewtons. It's gonna be like 18,750 newton, and then you can make it kilonewtons. All right. If you solve this problem for body B, 
not A, you are gonna get the same problem because they both have the same, but make sure when you put it for body B, body B is moving this way. So the velocity here is negative. And this one is gonna be positive because it's gonna be the F, this, and back on the other body. It's gonna give you the same number. And if you want to capture the next phase, so the initial velocity, like if you want to capture when they, everyone goes away, you are going to use V, this V as the initial velocity, and then use it to the other one. Okay, so I have many examples of solved here. We are going to continue on Tuesday to finish this chapter, okay? Study for the I, what if I told you 45 minutes?